Well, we read all of Romans 12 ag again, and as I said, it, it's because the, the flow of the, the text going through and not getting broken up, and um, Paul has, has laid out for 11 chapters this relationship with God being based on faith in Jesus. He's, he's given you some strong doctrine for 11 chapters. You are saved rescued through faith in Jesus. And then we get that therefore that we started looking at last week. And last week all we looked at was the first two verses, the, the important foundation that he laid of, of you. Therefore, with all that you know about this relationship with God, therefore, think about being transformed, renewed, living life different in a new way. And we use the example of Popeye remember uh, the idea of Popeye kind of sticking at that spot of saying I am what I am you know and he's, he's stuck there right and so this as we explore this this is written to that Roman community but it's it's about us it's written to us for us to to ponder where is he where is he taking us to here right? and after that be transformed Today, we read rather a long list. Not too many spots in Scripture like this. Kind of a long list of, of things for you to consider doing. Things to, to be. Ways you can respond to things in life. And as you read that, as you read through that, I want to challenge you to think, what was your, what was your first gut reaction? What was your first gut reaction as you saw that? Did it... Did you, did you feel like a, a personal challenge with some of that? Or, or did it just seem too distant? Kind of unattainable, you know, for real people that, you know, you can't relate to it, right? Oh, if there was a, a perfect world, you know, we could kind of do that, but I don't know. I, you know, it, it's too much for me to wrestle with. Some of it actually... Um, can be confusing to think about. You're thinking about your life and be fervent in spirit. Right? What's that? And bless those who persecute you. Well, what's, what's that going to look like? And I know as I read through quickly the first time, I'm like, I can wrap my head around a few of them. Um, weep with those who weep. All right, that makes sense, but what are the boundaries to that? What's he asking? Everyone that weeps. So, so as you look at this list, I think we can slip into the, a mindset pretty quickly of, well, what, what if I get like a 70% on the test here? Is that, is that good enough? You know, what if, I, if there's a quiz of this stuff, if I, if I get a B minus, you know, is that kind of, is that, is that good enough? And is it? What is being asked? This is, great to, this is great to explore because this is written here for us to, to ponder and to think about our lives. There's an example I thought of that can help illustrate the idea of, of how we relate with this. Um, there's, now, I know nothing about gambling, but I know that there's, there's gambling that takes place on boats out in the, the ocean. And uh, I had to do a little research. And um, with the laws of whatever country, um, once you leave a certain distance away from the shore, and with the United States, it's 12 miles, I guess, um, the laws regarding that realm that you're in are kind of, you're in international waters. And you can kind of gamble, and the laws there don't really apply. That there's a good example for us when we think about functioning in this realm with, with God as King. Christ is my King. I'm, I'm placing myself under His, His leadership, His realm. Right? So, am I comfortable just picturing leaving for a little while? <laughs> just leaving the realm for a little while, knowing that I'll come back. 
kind of what takes place with the gambling boats, right? One of the problems with this whole thing about transgression, breaking trust with God and, and sin that comes from it, is thinking about the depth of what it means to live in the kingdom. Being transformed, renewed, life is different. Is my sin, my hypocrisy, my um, gossiping, my, my quarreling, the things that, that Paul talks about with others here, right? Is that really a problem? Is it something that Christ died for so that I can live in His kingdom? Am I comfortable thinking about just wanting to go outside of the kingdom for a little while? Just going over and, and knowing that I'm going to come back. Comfortable with a 70% mindset as I look at a list of challenging you know, life actions. Am I uncomfortable with wanting to be transformed like, like Popeye, right? Paul lays out... Um, in that whole doctrine part uh, that he was laying out for chapters, um, he, he points out, if you steal a little bit, you steal. You're a lawbreaker. If I gossip a little bit, I'm a lawbreaker. That means not holy. The whole concept of holy, being in God's presence, His holy presence is perfect, no sin present there, right? And as a matter of fact, Paul starts off this letter to the Romans right in the first um, paragraph. He starts off who it's to, and it's two people called to be saints. So, holy ones. Called to be holy ones. So people called from where they're at to be holy ones. Able to go into God's space. Able to go into that holy space, called to that. He's laid out in chapters how that's possible. It's only possible through trusting in a Savior, trusting in a champion that has made the way into holiness, who has broken through, who has not fought evil with evil, who has remained in the Father's will all his days, so that just through a relationship of faith in Him, we're saved, rescued. This is how we are holy. And then he gives you that therefore. What are you going to do about it? I think that's powerful how he lays that out. Therefore. There are a number of descriptions, images uh, throughout Scripture uh, the Bible uses to help the Hebrew authors and use to help us approach this whole challenging topic about picturing being transformed. The idea of not staying like Popeye, right? Um, one of the pictures is picturing ourselves as clay. And the idea of clay on a potter's wheel being shaped by a potter. We should have that poetic image and ponder thinking about ourselves there. Transformed. How comfortable am I with that kind of thought, with that image? Allowing myself to be transformed? Do I fight back against being transformed? The potter's wheel? This relationship of faith, this living in the kingdom with Christ as king, we talk about have gives us a great peace in our heart, but it has to look like something in the world. It, it has to look different than just the world would tell us is good and right. right? James, in his letter, points out, because Paul used the language about our bodies, you know, living sacrifice, connect your life with your faith. James does the same thing in talking about faith and it's, it's got to be, if it's real, if you really think you're in the kingdom, then it should be coming out and seen. From chapter 2 in James. 
What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, doesn't have any works? Can that faith save him? Well, the, the, you go by the, the doctrine part, you know, uh, um, yeah, you know, faith is what saves us. But he's, he's questioning, are you in a relationship of faith that I'm not seeing anything? He's just challenging to think about that. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking food, and one of you says, go in peace, stay warm and well fed, and doesn't do anything for them, is your faith connected to your body and your words and your actions? So our faith has to look like something. That's a consistent pattern here. There's a big question, I think, that comes out um, at the beginning of Romans uh, in, the, in the second verse that we looked at last week. And it's not in the form of a question, but I think it gives us something to really ponder as a big question. He talks about being transformed, renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What is the will of God? That's a big question for us. What is God's will? I, I pray about His will be done, but what is it? That's a challenge for us. What does it look like, right? Well, as we explore Scripture, we have some palpable physical challenges about what it looks like to connect our bodies and our voices and our, our minds to life. At first, I think it can seem vague when we look at some of these things that Paul lists out here. Like, abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. But you're meant to, to reflect on it. How does one know good? Who defines good? Where do I find that? You can see that God says, let me define good in the world. Cling to what is good. What does that mean for me in daily life? What do I do to abhor evil? Can I live in Sodom for a little while and not let it impact me? You know, and so those are the, that's the art of us living life. Cling to what is good. I think a wonderful part of this whole adventure of being disciples of Jesus is we go to that spot with, he said, I want my peace inside you. He said, I want you to feel peace in the midst of all the things of life. Deep joy inside that Paul writes about from prison, right? And with knowing that through everything, he's, he's rescued us. Sinners, he's rescued us. And what is it that could possibly motivate me to want to allow God to transform me? It's knowing Jesus has rescued me. Christ came to save sinners. He came to save me from my sin. He came to save you. We live as disciples. Paul so often says this. We live as disciples together. We're not meant to walk on this journey of faith by ourselves. We're meant to team up together. Strengthen each other. Support each other. Impact the world together. These letters aren't written to individuals. They're written to churches. Written to a body of believers, then and now. Christianity impacts society in healthy, healthy ways. Especially this Roman community. Picture, picture this community, uh, this church in Rome that gets this. Probably a... Probably... Um, met in someone's home and probably let's picture you know if you've got a home, large enough house you're kind of a wealthy person right and maybe maybe one of the neighbors who's a little bit wealthy in your neighborhood is is at this church but also also indentured servant the the slave from down the street are here the the woman 
who's having troubles. She's here altogether. Some are, are Jewish background. Some are Gentile background. There's the guy that was homeless invited in. All, all together as church. And Paul emphasized Jesus came to save all because all are sinners. And you're one in Christ. That's just, that's so, so powerful for us to think of the idea of we're all in need. And we're all rescued. When you reread this list, and I encourage you, reread chapter 12 at home, do it slowly. Have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. Ponder each line one at a time. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We get to live in His kingdom. Are there things that can motivate me to want to go outside the kingdom for a while? What might those be? How might I cling to good and abhor evil? Can I picture being on the potter's wheel and being transformed and where are you taking me, Lord? And being comfortable with that. You can always look to the cross as a constant reminder of God's love for you. A sinner rescued. The cross is a, a constant reminder of how much God loves us, how forgiven we are, right? and that we have that wonderful relationship of being saved and His peace in our heart. And He wants you to live with that peace. And then make sure to look at that spot that Paul then takes us to. Therefore, and we picture living our days ahead, pondering that therefore. That's good.